Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about comets as being from one of these two places, from the Kuiper Belt or from the Oort Cloud, and spending most of their time there. Um, but I want to ask you first, uh, kind of going back to this idea of um, eccentric orbits that we talked about way back in week three or something, um, what is true about objects that are in more eccentric orbits? Uh, get closer to the sun than ones in less eccentric orbits. That's true. So their perihelion distance is smaller. Um, and also it's true that they get farther from the sun than ones in less eccentric orbits. So their aphelion distance is larger. And that's illustrated by this uh, kind of colorful set of ellipses above where, uh, for example, this blue trace has a really short perihelion, but a really long aphelion. And so because of this, uh, comets in very eccentric orbits tend to spend a lot of time far away from the sun. Um, and also, as we know, they uh, move faster toward perihelion than they do at aphelion. And so um, what we can do then is we can look at different comets and look at their eccentricities to see which ones come closest to the sun and also get farthest from the sun, right? So the comets here with the highest eccentricities here, Comet Halley, Hale-Bopp, and Hyukataki, um, those would get very close to the sun when they come screaming through the inner solar system, uh, but they would spend a vast, vast majority of their time very far away. Okay, we can also look at some of their other um, orbital characteristics. So the semi-major axis is half of the long way across the ellipse, and the inclination in degrees, that's how far they are tilted out of the plane of the solar system. And then we can ask ourselves, based on these characteristics, what are some possible fates? for these comets? How do their uh, you know, icy lives end? So um, when we look at the low eccentricity comets, Temple 1, Wild 2, and 67P, these are all comets, by the way, that we have um, explored with space missions. Remember, Temple 1, we shot a, a probe at it to explode some material off in order to gather that material. Wild 2, we gathered dust from that as well. And then 67P, uh, we have Rosetta orbiting around right now and Philae the lander landed on. Okay, so these low eccentricity comets have very short semi-major axes, right? That's part of what it means to have a low eccentricity. And some of these could meet really spectacular ends by running into things in the solar system, right? And so an example of this was comet Schumacher-Levy, which uh, in, I think, 1994, uh, crash landed into Jupiter. So got too close to Jupiter's Roche limit, was torn apart into many small pieces, and then each of those small pieces hit Jupiter, um, releasing amounts of energy as it crashed through Jupiter's uh, atmosphere, equivalent to, you know, nuclear explosions. So this was, uh, you know, probably a sight to behold, uh, if you were an astronomer at the time and kind of gives us a feeling for one way that comets can end. They could hit gas giants like Jupiter, of course, because they're really big targets, uh, but they could also hit terrestrial planets. And, uh, you know, part of the cratering that we see on terrestrial worlds is from comet impacts. And we also think that comets, um, as they impacted worlds, helped to bring in that icy material from the outer solar system into the inner solar system. So we'll talk a little bit more about that next time, that comets are one of the main delivery systems uh, to put water on the inner terrestrial planets. Okay, so when we look at the other set of comets in this table, the ones with very high eccentricities, remember these come very close to the sun at their perihelion. So um, one of the ways that a comet can die is very boring. It can just, on every approach, lose a little bit of material, right? Each time it comes near the sun, its uh, nucleus vaporizes, and not all of that material can gravitationally collapse back onto the comet. Some of it is lost to space every time. And so over time, that can just eat away and eat away at the comet until it's no more. Um, but something more interesting can happen, uh, which is that some of these very high eccentricity comets coming very close to the sun can become what we call sun grazers. So this is an image from a, um, a solar observatory called SOHO. And these two little traces you see in the lower right-hand corner are sun grazing comets that are coming in to essentially hit the sun's atmosphere and uh, burn up. So here's that picture in a little bit more detail. 
you can see the, you know, the streaming pattern here is the corona of the sun. Uh, these brighter regions are some solar flares that were captured at the same time. And then these two sun grazing comets are in their death dive into the sun. So that's, um, you know, one of the other spectacular fates for a comet. 